song uh, Driving in a Car Show? No, 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 no. Sing it again. That was a good one. What was, what was the song? <laughs> you are the sunshine of my life. Oh, that's wonderful. Forever you'll be. Yeah, anyway. That's great. But, uh, we got another we got another episode of Ivan a Car rolling now. <laughs> and we started off with a little with a little rendition. That was beautiful. Yeah, Thank so, you. So this isn't the singing one, and this isn't the comedy one. I mean you're not you're not Seinfeld and I'm not some other comic. So so this is you and me talking. This is this is this you is, and you and me in a car. Is, which is great. This is the best of all, you and me. Yeah, well thanks for doing it, Wayne. It really means a lot. Oh, I'm really happy to be here. Okay, awesome. Thank so you. another episode of I'm in a Car. I got the privilege of having uh, Wayne Bricknell on the show. Um, owner and principal of Way Pittman Ford out in Guelph. So thanks for thanks for coming on. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. So we're we're wearing uh, Leaf jerseys um, for a couple of reasons, I guess. This is gonna oh, we're getting a call. It's gonna ring twice, um, and then it'll it'll go away. The sound. Let's take it. Let's go out to the caller. Huh? <laughs> no, I can't record. <laughs> yeah, so the lines are open. Yeah, the lines are open. Um, so yeah, we're wearing jerseys. Uh, Bit of a coincidence today, because it's not only Game One of the Stanley Cup playoffs, Boston, Toronto. So go, Leafs, go! Uh, but there's a bit of a special occasion with you know jerseys being worn today. So you want to give us a little bit of a yeah, rundown I mean, what I, that's about? I think we've all been touched by the uh, the tragedy in Humboldt, Saskatchewan, the terrible bus accident, and uh, I think everyone can relate to uh, what those families are going through and 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 their teammates and the community. And, uh, you know, so in keeping with that, um, one of the things that, I, that Rob and I had talked about, what I'd like to do is, um, is to, I, I want to be, I want this to be the most viewed video uh, at, uh, with Intrigue Media. And I, I believe the current record is 900 and... It's like 917 or something like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I want to get to 1,000 views. And in order to do that, uh, I will donate $1 or the dealership will donate $1 for every view up to a thousand, which will put us as the most viewed, but we'll also uh, raise a thousand dollar donation to be made to the uh, the um, the Humboldt uh, GoFundMe page awesome. uh, in support of uh, of the hockey team. And it, you know, I just think it's just so amazing what's happened with our country, uh, the way you know from coast to coast people pulled together to support. Yeah, us. it's been massive. It, it's really it's really an incredible thing. And as you and I were, were speaking before you hit the button. Um, just the, the the most incredible, awful thing for any parent uh, to have to go through, or teammate, or friend, or sibling, or uh, you know anybody associated with this, and it's it's just an awful tragedy. And just want to support it. Yeah, that's amazing. And you're right; it is. It has been awful. It's horrific, right? It's uh, and it's touched the nation. So mm-hmm. that's. I mean, it's amazing though for you to come on and and kind of give back that way with a little bit of a competitive spirit in, in itself so that's pretty cool so thanks for doing that so watch this video share this video let's get it to a thousand views let's raise a thousand dollars and we raise a thousand dollars um so i guess what we what we need to do then is when that thousand dollars uh, gets raised we've got to do another one okay sure so that, that means that this has to be compelling and interesting or people so are going to okay, ask let's, other people to let's share. get compelling and interesting <laughs> then so can you uh can you give me any skeletons in the clock no i'm joking um <laughs> Well, you've been you've been a, a member of this community for a really long time, and and community has just kind of been at the heart of kind of the way you operate. You know, not just yeah. as a dealership, but also as a, as a person. Right. So, can um, you give us a, just a sense well, as to why it's so important to you? Well, it, it's it's been you know it's the way I was raised, uh, the way uh, Wayne Pittman, my uncle, um, ran the dealership, and and the dealership was always involved. And in fact, uh, quick little history: um, my grandfather. Morris Pittman came to Guelph in the 50s and, and was a was a General Motors dealer and I'm, I'm proud to say that dealership is now Barry Cullen and has been Barry Cullen Chevels it was Chevels Cadillac um, for almost 50 years so congratulations to Mark and Barry and, yeah, and the whole Cullen job. family great dealership um, my grandfather uh, sadly got sick and, and passed away before my uncle was old enough and, and and let's say educated in the business enough to take over um, Wayne work, continued to work in the business and uh, was lucky enough to uh, to buy uh, the Ford dealership from Carl Small uh, back in 1976. And my uncle tells a story. He went home and told my aunt, we have to decide, do we stay with, with General Motors and leave Guelph or do we stay in Guelph and leave General Motors? And thankfully, right. uh, they decided to stay in Guelph because this is a great community and, uh, and you know, I, I, you know, looking back, I mean, it was, a, it was the right decision for, for all of us. Yeah, cool. 
So my uncle and I have always been very close from the time I was a, a small child, and uh, he's a great influence um, in my life and uh, a mentor. And uh, and I was watching the car business. My dad uh, was an insurance broker, and all due respect to insurance brokers, it's a great business. Um, I'm looking at these new cars and and all the excitement in the car business, and it just cars you know, are a lot sexier than insurance. There's then, just no yes. question about so, that. So you know, it kind of it kind of got to me, and and uh, thankfully, my uncle. Um, you know, I, I worked at the dealership um, over the years in high school. I was. I was washing cars at Wayne Pittman Ford when Elvis died, so some of the <laughs> older viewers yeah, may yeah. remember that. Yeah, yeah. That was that uh, was a big deal. Yeah, and that was I think it was 1977, August 77. I was not um, around for that big deal. No, I was uh, I was 17. <laughs> nice. And uh, anyway, um, I went to Brock University in St. Catharines. Uh, very proud to go to that school. Really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, came to work for the deal for my uncle at the dealership. Uh, for a couple of years following uh, after graduation and uh, and then was I uh, got a job with Ford Motor Company six years at Ford on the corporate side um, my uncle asked me there's a story we yeah go about. hit on it it's all good really we're um, six minutes you got lots of time um, some of you may remember that Wayne Pittman sold the dealership back in uh, I think 91 uh, the new it was still called Wayne Pittman Ford he was still the landlord the new owner uh, had some struggles, and uh, I didn't. I was working at Ford Motor Company at the time. Didn't realize that uh, that uh, Wayne uh, was selling, and then didn't realize that he was that he, uh, that he had an opportunity to buy it back. And uh, actually, when he when he was buying it back, I, was, I had left Ford. I was a sales manager at Scarborough, which was exciting. Um, called me, said to Maria and I, my wife Maria, can you come up? Tuesday night, come to Guelph. I, I need to talk to you. Okay. Out of the blue, come. out of the blue. Yeah, and I thought, from Scarborough. And I and I thought, you know, he bought. He, I knew he wanted to get back in the car business, and I thought he's bought a dealership, in a small dealership in some town that he doesn't want to live in, and he wants me to run it for him, which would be a great opportunity. Sure, but sure. I, I didn't know what to expect. I certainly wasn't expecting him to say that he had bought his dealership back in Guelph, and that he wanted me to join him as his general manager, which. I was very excited to do, and and at the same time, uh, we were happy to tell them, my aunt and uncle, that uh, that we were expecting our first child, which is yeah. our son Douglas, who's now 22 and works at Ford Credit. Amazing in Oakville. So, yeah, that's the quick history. Yeah, no, that's amazing. So over time, Wayne, uh, you know, Wayne's retired, and uh, and I've been buying more and more of the dealership now uh, in a, in a majority position and. Uh, and I'm very proud to be able to continue on the family legacy and a family business in a great city like Guelph. Cool. And then, you know, being part of the community, this this uh, idea around Humboldt today, uh, I know that you have worked a lot with Paul DeMarco with uh, Bracelet of Hope. Yes. Um, and it seems like the dealership is doing something, like, all the time throughout the year. So what what's the perspective on being so involved in everything around your community? I, I think it's just, uh, you know, my, my grandfather, Morris Pittman, was in Rotary in Guelph uh, in the Friday Club, Paul's Club, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Friday. Uh, my uncle, Wayne, was, Wayne Pittman, was in the Friday Club. I'm in the Monday Night Rotary Club. Uh, my father was in Rotary in Oakville for his most of his career as an insurance broker there. Um, I, and so I think Rotary, for me, was a, was a kind of a basis of the spirit of, of giving and service above self and yeah, the really idea cool. that... Um, you know, everybody can do something. If, if, if everybody just did something positive, something to try and help, you know, I think the world would be a better place. The, the dealership was always, has always been involved in the community, community events, fundraising, and Guelph is such a tremendous community for uh, fundraising and for getting behind something and, and really making, uh, you know, a, a great contribution to charities and things that help everyone. Yeah, for sure. So I, I think it's just part of the actual fabric of, of our business and our business philosophy and how we how we operate it's just kind of weaving into the dna yeah so yeah, yeah. we don't you know sometimes we do things we write checks or donate to a uh, something and we don't beat our chest and say aren't we great look at the donation we made and right you know it, you don't it's that's not really the reason to do it and it is more about it being the right thing to do but but you know, as a business like like all businesses, it's also nice to get some recognition in the community and 
and hopefully, you know, we're giving back to a community that's given so much to us. And, uh, you know, we live here, we raise our families here, we pay our taxes here, lots of taxes. And, <laughs> and uh, you know, and so we, we want to continue to contribute and, uh, and hopefully the community will support us in return. Yeah, that's cool. I, I really like the idea too. And, and someone has asked us, because intrigue is very similar, right? Like we, we get involved up big time. You guys are everywhere. Yeah, right. Amazing. That's, and that's, really what we're, that's what we're hoping for. Um, but a lot of people ask me the question about like why why do you give back so much and uh, I've always answered kind of like what you said it's like it's not really about giving back it's about getting involved and you know if you really want to make a community thrive well you got to be part of making it happen not just sit on the sidelines hoping someone else will do it so I think that's great you know we were talking a little bit about parenthood and, and um, you know I think um, with you know what just continuing on with what you were saying, I think the idea is you have to show up, you know, whether it be for a charity, you, you get involved, you know, get your hands dirty, get out there and, and meet people or, you know, whatever you can do. Some people it's sweat equity, some people it's writing checks, but show up, you know, right. and it's the same whether you're, you know, to be a good parent, I think you need to be there, you need to be present, to be a good employer, uh, to be a good leader, you, you need to show up and be there and show that you care, show that it means something to you, and hopefully you're able to inspire someone, you know, to have the, it mean something to them. Yeah, I think it's really interesting that you, and I totally agree, um, and I think a lot of people don't necessarily understand, and, and I know a lot of people do, but a lot of people don't understand how powerful it is to show up. Like, it doesn't take a ton, but showing up is a huge gesture, symbolic representation, actively putting behaviors behind words and intentions, and I think that's just really cool. So shifting it to uh, more of like a leadership from a business side of things, how many staff do you have at the dealership? We have uh, 60 people now, and so plus some part-time. Yeah, okay. So I mean, that's a pretty big group of staff. <laughs> pretty big group of people. And, you know, but I, it does, some days it, it, it doesn't feel like that at all often. I mean, we have, we have a really... I, I'm really proud of our people. I think we have a really great staff and, and uh, great management team. And, and uh, it, you know, everyone sort of, I think, understands what, who, who we are, what we represent, what we're trying to do, what our goal is. I think the job of a leader, you know, for me is to, is to lead our management team and, and, and then, you know, have them lead their teams um, to, toward a common goal and uh, a common philosophy and, you know, some of the things, I mean, I, I don't want to sound preachy, but some of the things that I that I talk about often is um, at work is I, I want to work with people I enjoy seeing every day. We spend we spend a lot of time, most of our time. Yeah, either, significant portions. Yeah, either in bed or at work. Have yeah. a bed that you enjoy, that you get a good night's sleep in, yeah. and have a job that you enjoy going to. And part of that is, that, you know, meaningful work, uh, rewarding work, um, work that at the end of the day you go home feeling good that you've done something positive uh, yeah. and and also working with people that you like and respect is a big part of our satisfaction sure absolutely so, you know I don't I've I've have worked in the past with jobs that I didn't like you know wondering how many how much longer can I do this right <laughs> I, I just you know I can't stand it or maybe um, a place where the the culture in, in the environment at work is not good and the culture is not supportive and you just feel like you don't belong. You know, I want to work with people that I like, that, that get it, that, that buy into, um, that are engaged, let's say, in our mutual uh, goals and, and, you know, our mutual drive forward. Yeah, that's cool. And I mean, no pun intended with a dealership driving forward, but yeah. um, when, when you talked about common philosophy, common goal, so do you have anything in place right now? That you're all trying to, you know, I, th I think it's about. Um, we we have a, a like a vision statement on our wall where we want to be. I mean, this is behind closed doors, let's say, but it, you know, where we want to be um, the most respected and admired uh, dealership in you know in, in Guelph and surrounding areas, where you can feel confident that you're at the right place dealing with the right people. I believe word for word, that's how it's awesome. So, you know, saying we want to be the most respected and admired, it's a goal. It, it's it's not that we are, it's it's that we want, that's what we're trying to achieve. And so in, in thinking that way, to be respectable, I think you have to, it starts with being respectful. You know, you, you have to be, respect other people, respect your, you know, 
your staff, respect your customers, uh, respect your community, and, and hopefully act in a respectable way where, where then you you can earn people's respect. Yeah, that's um, I think that's a totally fair perspective. It's like that kind of age-old adage of if you want to be interesting, be interested. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you want to be loved, love. Right. I think, you know, and, and to be a leader, I can't lead if no one's following you can have the title you can have you can own whatever business or enterprise or, or service you're, that you offer you can have that title but a genuine leader has you know a real leader has people following that that believe in so as, as a leader you have to be someone that people can believe in that they feel they can get behind and support this you know if you you can't lead if no one's following. Yeah, they true. they will follow because they have to because you're the boss. But that does that. There's a difference between he's the boss, so I'm I'm going to do what he says or she says, versus I'm I, I'm following that person because I believe in them yeah. and where they're leading and us. I want to help. Yeah, and you know, as as an owner, I do feel a sense of responsibility, and, and I learned this from my uncle and my father. Um, that I do have, I do feel a sense of responsibility um, to the staff, to our customers, to to operate the business in, in a in a way that um, that that's meaningful and appropriate and uh, and respectable. That's cool. So I mean, on that note, I mean, car salesman has probably one of the worst stigmas attached to it, and now with such an educated consumer. What kind of things are you doing at the dealership to be respectable? How do you bring that to life? Well, I, it's, it's, it's a good point, and you're right. I mean, uh, uh, car salespeople, politicians, lawyers, sorry. Yeah. We, we, we all seem to be, uh, you know, in these, in these... We're not up there with the firefighters, let's put it that way. Sure, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. you know, um, but I think it, in any business, I think it comes down to treating people the way you'd like to be treated, and that's the way I was raised. That's the way... I, you know, I've raised my children. You, you know, I think to to genuinely be successful at something for the long haul, you have to be able to connect with people. You have to be there for them when you know not everything goes perfectly. You have to be. I think the true measure of a company sometimes is how they respond when things don't go well. Big time. Um, but if you have a hit and run, what I call a hit and run mentality, oh, sell so the car today. I don't know who you are tomorrow. That that will only last. That the shelf life for that is very limited. Yeah, well, we're not in a big community. I mean, as much as it is a big community, it's not a big community. Right. So if you want to be in it for the long haul, I think you need to, you know, the farmers and hunters, right? And, and I think you need to be a farmer. You need to uh, to tend your field and, and uh, make sure that you are able to generate uh, produce from that. Field yeah, for sure. And so, on an and, annual and, basis. And you, which means you got to pay attention to it almost daily, right? So what kind of things do you do as a group to, to bring that idea to life? Like what kind of things are you doing a little bit differently than say your, you know, stereotypical car well, dealership? You know, I don't know. Uh, well, it's interesting. I'm, I'm not sure what a stereotypical car dealership is anymore. I know what you well, mean. Well, yeah, but I mean, so one of the things, the reason I'm asking this question mm-hmm. is because one of our team members uh, purchased a car from you and afterwards specifically mentioned how great of an experience it was. Oh, that's great. Thing. Yeah, it was great. It was. It was cool, right? And it was, it was great to hear because we were working with you, your client, and so it's it's a lot easier for us to help companies that are really good than it is for us to help companies that aren't. But he came back and he was like genuinely impressed and he was an astute consumer, not just in cars, but just generally speaking. And because he worked with us, he's a marketer and understands client experience. So it was like, I, I kind of asked him what kind of things were they doing? And he was, you know, walking me through his experience. So I was just curious uh, if there's anything specifically that you kind of focus on with your team when it comes to training, when it comes to guest experience, when it comes to the sale, whatever, um, that really has kind of made what he experienced come to life. Yeah, I, I think, you know, we, we want to create an environment where it, it does feel kind of like family, that, uh, that hopefully there's a bit of a buzz at the dealership when, when you walk in, you can feel a bit of something, um, you know, if the, when we have a Ford rep or somebody who, who travels around to different dealerships, they come in to our place. I'm proud to say that, that that they'll say, you know, it feels good here. Like something feels a little bit like people the energy seem, is good. Yeah, the energy's good. People seem happy to be here. They seem to like you can you can kind of feel it that they like being here. They like 
each other and, and they like the work they do. And and so I think you know making a customer feel some of that and feel part of that is important. Yeah, and not easy to do. So I wanted to it's, ask that. It's not, it has to be genuine. Yeah. I, I think that's that's part of it. Um, being genuine, showing up like like we said before, being there for them, listening. It's it's you know the old adage you know you have two ears <laughs> and one mouth, right? So <laughs> you should be listening twice as much. And here I am rambling on and on. No, you're good. Uh, I'm asking questions. This is the job. <laughs> this is what it's meant to be. But you know we. Listen to the customer and and try to give them what they want, not not what we want. Don't, let's not push them into something that we want. Let's give them what they want because they are likely more likely to be happy and remember that and feel comfortable and and we build a relationship and they come back and, and we have this thing going on and on. It's great when you hear someone coming back saying this is my third or fourth or fifth vehicle or I brought my family in. And you know I want to give a shout out to. My fellow dealers in the automobile, we talked about the stereotypical dealership. I, I think a lot of, you know, we're not alone in this. I think there's some really good dealerships that I think people get it. Uh, the ones that are successful that are in it for the long haul understand this and, and realize that, you know, we need to cultivate this. And the hit and run uh, mentality, it's still out there, unfortunately. Right. It's, it is a you know, let's say a stigma or a stereotype that we're, that we, that we fight, but I think we need to stay aware of it and not lose sight of that, that we may be viewed <laughs> as being, you know, or that people are on guard. And right, right. We, we have to respect that. And, and hopefully we're able to convey that look, that's not who we are. We just want you to have a good experience here uh, because we want repeat this yeah over that's and over cool again, so. and it makes a lot of sense right like it's not um rocket science strategy but it seems typically a bit more difficult to implement than one may think and the reason i want to circle back to this idea of the energy that someone feels when they enter a room um but first of all, I think it's funny when people talk about that kind of thing. They're like, you know, people actually seem like they enjoy it here and they seem surprised, you <laughs> yes, know? Yeah. Like it's unusual. <laughs> right. So that, that's just an interesting topic because uh, we get those comments all the time at entry. But um, it really feels like that kind of buzz is only possible when, to your point, it's genuine. Mm -hmm. And that the people in the room uh, or in the building, whatever, together are working together and they enjoy it. And that's a result of recruitment. That's a result of hiring. So can you give us one tip or two tips that you've learned along the ways that other entrepreneurs could use in their journey to find the right team? Because that is not an easy thing to do. Well, you know, it, it, it's hard sometimes in our business to find people just because of what you were saying earlier. You know, someone would say, I'm a, I'm a car salesperson. How do I feel about that? Well, if you're, if you're a good car salesperson, you're like, be, be a good one. And a good one is someone who has high customer satisfaction, repeat customers. It's... It, it's not always the person who's at the top of the board, sells the most cars. That's a byproduct of doing things right and being that that person. So, uh, or or a technician, you know, be be a good technician, know your trade. Um, but I, I think it, you know, when you're recruiting or when you're when you're hiring someone, I think you really need to sit down and and talk to them, get a feel for what kind of person they are, get a feel for what their values are, what their last employ employment experience was like. Um, if they start talking about how they, you know, everybody they worked with were, you know, what's wrong Jerks with, or yeah, what's wrong with the people they worked with, the boss they had, the, the, the values of the, of the dealership, okay, or of the, the company that they worked for previously, you get, you get a feel for that. But, and then, um, I think part of it also, this may sound a little unorthodox, but I think when you do hire someone, um, I think that your staff, if you've got the right kind of culture and environment. And if people genuinely care about the place they work in, that they're protective of that too. And if they go, you know, that new guy Rob Murray, uh, I'm not so sure. Yeah, I, you know, I'd keep an eye on him. I, I'm not sure that you know if he really fits in with us. Um, and it's not a it's not a, a cliquey thing. It's more of a shared shared um, values and, and culture kind of thing. Uh, the, I think that sometimes your staff will let you know if someone. If, this isn't going the way you want. If they genuinely understand, the, you know, your business and, and what you're looking for, right? I think that they're they're a helpful resource to, to say this isn't quite right, or this person they've got it, they right. they have it. You know, let's invest time and, and 
energy with this person because they have potential to be great. That's cool. And it means it means a lot, though, to have your staff being able to give you that kind of feedback. It really demonstrates that you've developed a lot of trust with your people. So what kind of things do you do on your day-to-day, week-to-week to build relationships with the 60 staff at that we've been before? Well, it, it, it's funny. Uh, you know, another thing, I guess, for us as, as leaders and entrepreneurs and business owners, it's easy to... to to fall off the, the track of, of what's important or what it's hard to stay steady. It's like an exercise routine. You know, you can go, wow, this is, so, this is great. I feel so good. But you can stray off of that because the day gets busy and whatnot. One of the things I've, I've been doing over the last uh, the last month is um, I'm, I've been going in uh, a lot of days at, at 7.30 in the morning. We open, we open the doors in our service department at quarter to eight. Um, I've been going in uh, and kind of greeting people as they walk in and they're kind of like oh what are you doing here (laughs) why wouldn't i be here you know um but it it, you know you get a chance to talk in a positive way how's it going how are your kids you know what did you watch the game last night um you know social interaction how was your weekend not talking business hey did you do this i asked you to do that yesterday why haven't you done that 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 might come later (laughs) if that that thing's happening Yeah, yeah but but more just again showing up being there connecting talking they know they know me and, and my family, uh, you know, I, I know a, a little bit about them and their families. And, and hopefully we can have a, an easy, genuine conversation um, that, again, builds that rapport. And when and it helps it helps people feel that they belong. Yeah, that they, that's they, massive. They serve a, a that they're, they, they have, there's a reason for them being there. They're important to us and, and uh, we're counting on them. Just, you know. Uh, at our Christmas party, you know, we've, we've, I always finish my little Christmas speech at our Christmas party, and they say, "Look, um, you know, people are counting. You know, don't even think about drinking and driving tonight. You know, we supply taxis and Uber." Sure, of course. Um, but it's it's a message about you know care that says, you know, people are counting on you. You know, your family, your coworkers. I'm counting on you. Like, and, and just like you know, you're counting on me to be responsible and 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 to do what I have to do to run the business. And that's not always. It's you know when you when you when you are the leader or you own a business, it's not always sunshine and lollipops when you're dealing with an employee. Sure. Sometimes you have to be direct. You have to deliver the hard news. Sometimes it's an unpleasant conversation. We have to be able to do that. We we have to do our jobs first. If we can have that kind of relationship on top of that, you know, where it's a where we can be you know friends on top of that. That's that's the real icing on the cake, and that's cool. and and it's a really nice thing to do. But you can't sacrifice that that need to be the boss. Let's say. Well, it's a job requirement, yeah, right? Right. As a, as, we, a, as an owner, right? There's a job requirement there. So we, you know, a real. If I had to sum it up, I would say one of the mantras again. Uh, I didn't create this, but to be firm but fair. You know, fair. I love the word fair. Being fair with people. Um, really, it says so much in one word, being fair with an employee, being fair with a customer and, and, and expecting fairness in return. It is a two way street. Right. And, um, when you, when you reach that level of, of fairness, that's, you know, you're really, I think that's when you're really operating at, um, the way you should be, in my opinion. Well, and it's consistent. Then people can predict what's going to happen. Nothing becomes unexpected. They don't go, oh, my God, why is he (laughs) acting that way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. And that gives a lot of people confidence, which builds trust. Mm -hmm. That's really neat. So with the last minute uh, here, if you could go back and tell yourself something you know now that you wish you had known then when you started this whole dealership ownership thing, what would you say? It's a great question. I think um, I I would tell myself to relax and believe in myself. don't don't waver in your in your in your goal and your dream. Don't waver in your belief in yourself, um, and and hopefully you'll inspire others to believe in you and your dream along the way as cool. as a leader. I think that's that's a big thing. Um, but I think um, you know, as I said, treating people the way you'd like to be treated. It's kind of the golden rules. Sure, I, but things. you've known that forever. But, yeah, and but those things are so true. The reason that those things are still around is because. They're, they're just proven time and time yeah. again. That's that's the thing. But I, I think staying with it, being consistent, being consistent is so important. Being fair and being consistent are, are really important things. So I would, I, but, you know, in answer to your question, long, but again, I'd repeat, 
um, just to relax and stay focused and you'll get there. Cool. Well, thanks for doing this. Thanks so, very much for having thousand me. views, thousand yes. dollar donation to the GoFundMe page yeah. for the for Humboldt. Right. Um, so yeah, make sure you share this, watch it around, and thank you a That's ton for doing this, Wayne. Thank you, Rob. Okay. Thank you very much. Cheers. Really enjoyed it. See you guys.